Welcome to the Ocean Grown Academy Masterclass. Today we are going to dive into the history of one of the world's most utilized plants by humans. Humans have shared a long and fascinating relationship with cannabis that can be traced back to some of the oldest domesticated plants. First, let's investigate, where is cannabis from? From what we can tell, cannabis likely split from its closest relative, humulus, or more often referred to as hops. Many of us know hops itself for being one of the main ingredients in many of today's beers. Hops and cannabis are so similar that pollen from hops and cannabis are difficult to distinguish from each other. According to the molecular clock estimates, around 27.8 million years ago, during the mid oligocene these two plants separated into separate species. Cannabis most likely developed in the northeastern Tibetan Plateau. The oldest pollen known to be from cannabis was found on the boundary between the Tibetan Plateau and the Loess Plateau. This pollen was dated to around 19.6 million years ago during the early Miocene. Cannabis was widely distributed over Asia by the late Pleistocene through its natural and wild propagation strategy. Exact geographical origins of cannabis is unclear today because of the rain shifted experience during glacial and interglacial cycles covering hundreds of thousands of years. Currently, the oldest known evidence of cannabis linked to humans comes from South Asia and dates to around 32,000 years ago. With that in mind, let's explore for a second some of the possible early interactions humans would have had with this plant and others. As humans began exploring new regions of the planet, they began to arrive in zones cannabis had been occupying. We can imagine a relationship humans would have had with the natural world around them. Hunting and gathering plants for food, they would eventually build relationships with plants slowly through the procedures of everyday life. Cannabis has a highly dense, protein-rich seed packed with oil, something our ancestors must have began to notice as they gathered a variety of plants for consumption and survival. We can also imagine our ancestors discovering the psychedelic effects produced from its sticky and oil-packed resin glands. Cannabis is also a hardy grass and lends itself well to construction of materials from baskets to clothing and more. Whatever the case may be, over the next 20,000 years, humans would begin to collect the seeds of cannabis along with many other types of plants and bring them closer to their current encampments. As they processed and consumed their bounties, extra seeds not consumed would be discarded nearby. Sometimes these humans would migrate away and return. With each passing year, with each passing generation, selection and relocation of cannabis seeds would begin to occur more and more. Our ancestors began to purposely bring seeds with them and collect them on their travels. Eventually, as humans began to grow into larger groups and migrate less often, the opportunity for a human selection process would increase and humans would begin to find more creative uses for different plants including cannabis. Genetic and archaeological evidence seem to point to cannabis first being domesticated in East Asia during the early Neolithic period, around 12,000 years ago. Of course, we must always keep our minds open when it comes to history. When we date a particular site, it's generally the oldest evidence we have. But most often, thousands of years of early cultivation techniques most likely had already been occurring. For cannabis, though, our story really starts to take off as humans begin to spread it all across Eurasia. Or at least that's one theory. In reality, cannabis has been present all around the world for millions of years and does utilize a very prolific breeding strategy that is multifaceted between insect and animal attraction, as well as natural elemental pollen distribution. By the time we humans began to investigate the origins of cannabis through genetic and archeological means, humans had carried and spread domestic cannabis all around the world. Many times domesticated cannabis varieties would be abandoned in a region and it would return to a feral state. It may have also spread its pollen onto wild varieties of cannabis, hybridizing many times over millennia thus rendering a varied set of genomic evidence of origin. What we do know for certain is that for over the last 10,000 years, humans have cultivated this plant for many different purposes, in many different environments, resulting in a variety of types of cannabis. From use of textiles and ropes for exploratory merchants, navy vessels of the Mediterranean, to the use of the medicinal properties of its cannabinoid-filled resin in Asia, cannabis spread all around the world. The oldest written record of cannabis usage comes from the Greek historian Herodotus's reference to the central Eurasian Scythians taking steam baths utilizing cannabis. In 440 BCE, he wrote in history's records, The Scythians, as I said, take some of this hemp seed, presumably flowers, and, creeping under felt coverings, throw it under red-hot stones, immediately it smokes, and gives out such a vapor as no Greek vapor bath can exceed. The Scythes, delighted, shout for joy. Not only did the classical Greeks and Romans use cannabis themselves, parallel cultures such as the Egyptians, 
Scythians, and Hittites were known to use cannabis in their medicine, religion, and recreational practices. In the 3rd century AD, the psychoactive properties of cannabis are described in writings from China. Smoke from cannabis incense burners was inhaled by Taoists. In the Middle East, use spread throughout the Islamic Empire to North Africa. In 1545, cannabis spread far and wide in the Western Hemisphere, where Spaniards imported it to Chile for its use as fiber. In North America, cannabis was grown for use in rope, cloth, and paper. The genus Cannabis was first classified in 1753 by Carl Linnaeus, a Swedish botanist, zoologist, taxonomist, and a physician, who formalized binomial nomenclature, the modern system of naming organisms. He is known as the father of modern taxonomy, using the modern system of taxonomic nomenclature. Linnaeus devised the system still in use for naming species today. At the time, Carl Linnaeus considered the genus of cannabis to be monotypic, meaning that it was considered to be a single species that he named Cannabis sativa L. L stands for Linnaeus and indicates the authority of who first named the species. Linnaeus was familiar with the European cannabis variety, commonly known as hemp, which was widely cultivated at the time for its excellent fiber material for textiles and ropes. Evolutionary biologist Jean-Baptiste de Lamarck published a description of a second species in 1785 of cannabis, which he named Cannabis indica. Lamarck based his description off the newly named species of plant specimens collected in India. He described Cannabis indica as having poorer fiber quality than Cannabis sativa, but greater utility as an inebriant. Additional cannabis species were proposed in the 1800s, including strains from China and Vietnam, but at the time, many taxonomists found these putative species difficult to distinguish. Although Cannabis indica had been discovered and classified, in the early 1900s, the single species concept was still widely accepted. The exception came with the Soviet Union, where cannabis had continued to be the subject of active taxonomic study. Regardless of the wide adoption of single species model in much of the West, the name Cannabis Indica was listed in various pharmacopias and was widely used to designate cannabis suitable for manufacture for medicinal purposes. In 1924, a variety of feral cannabis was discovered in Siberia. This species was short, branchless, and flowered quickly. At the time, Russian botanist D.E. Janizewski, who discovered it, believed it to be of sativa variety at first, but quickly realized that his discovery was of a new species. This new species was classified as Cannabis ruderalis, and it was believed to have developed from cultivated sativa varieties for hemp production that were abandoned. The variety went feral and adapted to its northern environment high in the northern hemisphere, where the light periods fluctuate in a much more extreme manner than they do closer to the equatorial zones. Through natural selection, this resulted in the unique traits we see today. In the 1970s, botanist Richard E. Schultz and co-workers concluded that stable morphological differences existed that support recognition of at least three species, Cannabis sativa, Cannabis indica, and Cannabis ruderalis. Although over the last 50 years this has been up to debate amongst botanists, the classifications for these three species are still generally recognized today. Unfortunately, after a long and studious history of cannabis cultivation and usage, starting in the early 1900s due to cultural beliefs and differences, coupled with rising advancements in pharmaceutical chemistry, resulted in many countries enacting laws against the cultivation of cannabis. As the world advanced in technology of trade and travel, the world began to see an increase in cultures beginning to mix at a rate it had never seen before. A backlash of widespread racism and xenophobia overtook the world, resulting in wars over land and culture across the world at an enormous scale. Cannabis itself became a victim of ignorance and was banished from our cultural ways of life that had sustained for thousands of years. Laws were enacted with the harshest punishments for cultivation and even possession of cannabis products. Although some countries and cultures retain their cannabis practices, most shun this incredible plant due to large misinformation campaigns led by a combination of religious and corporate entities. Slowly, though, as the world began to come to terms with this new era of speed, technology, and information, we began to once again discover the incredibly useful traits of plants. Although today we are still fighting to reclaim cannabis's rightful place amongst our most utilized cultivars, Many regions have begun to overturn the laws and practices imposed on this incredibly useful plant. The stigma of the past may be rooted deep in our psyche, but once again we have begun to awaken to the truth of nature before us. I hope you enjoyed this quick synopsis of a history of cannabis here at the Ocean Grown Academy. A while back, I actually created this episode a couple years ago, and I published it to Patreon, but I never published it to YouTube. But if you find this content pretty intriguing, let me know by hitting that like button or leaving a comment. If I get enough positive feedback, I'll go ahead and dive back into research. 
And you'll be able to join us on our next episode, Morphology, where we'll discuss physiology, taxonomy, and genetics.